Good morning, everyone. Nice to be back together after Sadhu Paksha. See where we are here. Continuing with Chapter 2 of Merging with Shiva, which is entitled, All Knowing is Within You, drawn from the 1970 Master Course. And in this approach to the Master Course, we're going through the lessons in the order in which they were given. <laughs> so we're up to 1970, and we're talking about events that happened between 1967 and 1970, drawing from Guru Chronicles. In October 1969, along with 12 monks and 54 students, Gurudeva undertook a 13-week pilgrimage to India and Ceylon. The pilgrimage called the 1969 Indian Odyssey visited France, Greece, India, Nepal, Ceylon, Singapore, Thailand, and Japan, with the greater part of the time being spent in India, where Gurudeva's group was the largest tour ever to visit the country. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Didn't have a lot of tours in 1969. It was large enough that the Minister of Aviation and Tourism, Dr. Karan Singh, who years later would visit Kauai and take Gurudeva as his Western guru, helped with the arrangements personally in each country. The spiritual leaders were sought out, a master calligrapher in Japan, a Buddhist Roshi in Thailand, and in India, a galaxy of yogis and great souls. This was Gurudeva's first visit to India in two decades and the first time ever for the students traveling with him. India captivated, confounded, challenged, and uplifted. India was, they concluded, the last place on earth where magic lived on the streets and divinity lived in the eyes of the people. One week retreats were held in Darjeeling and Udaipur, in the Himalayan foothills, and at Uttakamud in Nilgiri hills of South India. Once he took the pilgrims to a local theater to see the newly released movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Shum was again a major study for the pilgrims, and his devotees were introduced to Orthodox temple worship. In Madras, he held the International Yoga Convention. What was dear to him, what was dear <clears throat> What was most dear to Gurudeva during this three-month odyssey was his return to Ceylon. So we're going to save Ceylon for the next time. And to our text, lesson 13, experiencing without reacting. The next time the same experiential pattern appears, we approach it from a mountaintop consciousness because we have conquered those instinctive elements. Our intellect has been trained by family and friends, school teachers, and business acquaintances. We have to build a new intellect, an intellect from the soul out into the intellectual mind, rather from the instinctive area of the mind into the intellect, to be successful on the path of enlightenment. If we look at the past and we look at the future as both a series of dreams and the only thing that we are concerned with is our immediate reactions and what we carry with us now, we see that the past is there to test us and the future is there to challenge us. We cannot change the past, but we can change how we react to what has happened to us in the past. And we can change the future any time we want to. The soul builds a body around us in this life. That's what happened to all of us. This body goes through the same experiences year after year. Emotions go through the same experiences year after year until we build up strong enough within ourselves to face the experience without reaction to the experience. Then we go into a new series of experiences. And we have a Shum series here that relates. 
Nut shot, notepad, Munasha, emotional happenings, Mimunasha, the act of forgetting emotional experiences, emotions fading away along with the memory of the happening which caused them. When a situation mends itself, the process of forgetfulness begins. The ones that are remembered are those that have not been resolved as the area of the mind of Mimunasha has not been reached. Back to our text. Give yourself a test to prove this out. Go to a movie, one that will make you laugh and make you cry and make you suffer right along with the players. And that's how we live our life. We laugh, we cry, we suffer, we have joy, we have peace, like actors on a great stage. Then go to the same movie the next day and go through the same emotions again, another cycle in the same life pattern. Then go to the movie the day following that and go through the same emotions. Then go the next day and you will find you will go through the same emotions, but not quite as well. Then go the next. You will find your mind begins to wander into how the film was produced, just where the cameraman was standing when he filmed this emotional shot. You're becoming mystical. This is how the mystic faces his experiences. How was this produced? Where was the cameraman? Go the next day and you will again be distracted and may wonder about the voltage that runs through the carbon arc light that penetrates the film. Then go the next day. You won't be involved in the picture at all or the emotion. You could care less. You had that experience. You lived it through and you lived it out. It was neither good nor bad. It was neither high nor low. But you're completely involved in the cameraman, the actors, the personalities of the actors. You begin to get perceptive and you see that a particular actor was saying something and going through something but thinking about something entirely different. You didn't catch that the first time. You were blinded by emotion. And we're lesson 14, waiting for intuitive flashes. Go again and again and again, and finally you would become deeply involved within yourself and the people around you. Then you will start having a new set of experiences. Someone's eating popcorn on the left side, and someone's smoking on the right side, and you get up and move. The very first time you went to see the movie, you were not even conscious of anyone around you. And finally, after going to the same movie for two weeks, you sit down and you start breathing and going within yourself and you are not conscious of someone on the left side or someone on the right side or the film or the light penetrating the film or what is on the film. You are breathing and going within yourself and you begin to enjoy the bliss of your own being. This is what a mystic does in life. That's a wonderful meditation. If you don't want to go to the same film two or three weeks, night after night after night, well then just pretend that you do. Meditate on it. And in the course of a short meditation, you will see how a mystic lives his life. Now, of course, one film and the nerve-wracking experience is conquered. There's always another film being played in town, and you could start right over again. The same thing we do in our experiences. We go through one set of experiences, we react to them, we go within ourselves, we lose consciousness of the experience itself because we know how it was created. We studied it out so well. It has come to us in intuitive flashes. Then we go into the next movie, the next scene. Now, when the mystic wants to understand his series of experiences, he does not analyze himself. He doesn't go through the emotion of, why did this happen to me? What did I do to deserve that? What did this experience come to me for? I want to know the reason, and only when I know the reason can I go on. 
This binds him to the intellectual area of the mind. He lives his experiences in the consciousness of the eternity of the moment, and if an intuitive flash, a mountaintop consciousness, comes to him where he can see how he fit into the experiential pattern, he accepts it and he knows it's right because it permeates him so dramatically from the top of his head right through his entire body. The mystic waits for these intuitive flashes and he links one up with another but he doesn't flow his awareness through the intellectual mind and spend time in that area to try to analyze each happening or each reaction to try to justify it, to excuse it or to find out why it has happened. He doesn't do that. Why? Because the soul, the superconscious mind, doesn't work that way. And we have a related Shum series. Utah. A hoop or circle made of anything. Rehuta. Karma, a cycle of experience repeating. Kamrayuta. Preparing for a new karmic cycle as outlined in Jyotisha. As one enters an area of the mind, he travels through it either quickly or slowly as a traveler passes through a city. Having had the experience, a new cycle begins. Plans for a new cycle, for entrance into a new area of the mind, can be made while still within a persisting experience. So, preparing for a new karmic cycle. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. We're going to raise our flag, Artana Ritao, in a few minutes.